Hey Fingsters, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to check if all the elements within a given list are identical or not. Now to understand the problem better, let us have a look at an example. Suppose we have two lists, li underscore 1 and li underscore 2. Now li underscore 1 has all elements which are identical to each other. That is, li underscore 1 consists a string which is high and this high is present five times within the list while li underscore 2 has all elements which differ from each other. That is, it has the strings hi, welcome, to, fingster as individual elements within it. So it is quite clear that li underscore 1 has all identical elements while li underscore 2 has elements which are not identical. Now how do we implement this in our code and check if all the elements are identical or not? This is visible to us, but how do we implement this in the code? So that's the purpose of this lecture and I am going to help you with a list of methods which will help you to identify if all the elements in a list are identical or not. So without further delay, let us dive into the first method to do so. So in this method, we are going to use the count method. Now count is an inbuilt method in Python which is used to count the number of occurrences of a substring given in a string. For example, if you pass the value high within the count method, then in the first case, the count method will return 5 because high occurs 5 times within the list li underscore 1. While in the second case, that is li underscore 2, if you pass the value high within the list, then it will return 1 because high occurs only once within li underscore 2. And now we are going to use this property or this function to check if all the elements are identical or not. And how so? We are going to check if the output given by the count function when we pass the first element that is high is equal to the output of the len function when applied on li underscore 1. In other words, we are going to check if the output of count and then we are going to pass in the value high and then check if that is equal to the output of len when applied to the list li underscore 1 in the first case and li underscore 2 in the second case. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. Let's create a function by the name check and within it let's use an argument li so that we can pass in the values of li underscore 1 and li underscore 2 and now let's create a variable flag and this flag variable stores the output of the following that is now we are going to check if li dot count and then we pass in the first element so we are doing that with the help of its index and now we check if that's equal to the output of len when applied to li. Now if this is true, that is if flag, then we print identical. And if this is not true, then we print not identical. Now let's go ahead and pass in the values li underscore 1 to our function check. And then let's pass in the value li underscore 2 within the function check. So we are pretty much done with our program. Now let's go ahead and check if this works. And there we go. We have successfully derived the exact output that we wanted. As you know, li underscore 1 has all identical elements. So it prints identical. While in the second case, li underscore 2 does not have identical elements. That's why it prints not identical. So that brings us to the end of the first method. Now let's discuss another way of doing this. So now what you can do is store the value of the first element of the list in a variable. And now you can use a for loop to iterate through all the elements of the list to compare if every element of the list is equal to the value stored within the variable. So that means if you create a variable and then store the first element that is high 
within that variable and now if you use another for loop to check if the value in the variable that is high is equal to each individual element within the list and if the output to that function is true then that means all the elements within the list are identical otherwise they are not identical let's go ahead and have a look at the program to understand this better so as usual let us create a function which goes by the name check and now let's say li is the argument and now let us create our variable which will store the first element of the list so let's name it first underscore element and that equals to li and then store the element at the 0th index which is high now we need a for loop to iterate through all the elements of the list so let's say for element in li and now let's define the conditions that will help us to perform our check so if element is not equal to the first element then we immediately return false otherwise if all elements are equal then we move into the else section for the for loop and then we return true i hope you get the idea and i hope you know that you can also use the else statement with a for loop so what we are doing here is we are checking if element that is each item within the list is equal to the first element or not that is high in both the cases if that is not true then we immediately return false and we come out of the function otherwise if this if statement is not executed within the for loop then we move inside the else statement and within it we return true that is when the else statement is executed it means all the elements within the list will be identical now let's go ahead and pass li underscore one within the function check and now we are going to check if the output received after passing the list li underscore one into the function check is true in that case we will print identical otherwise we will print not identical now we are going to follow the same procedure for the list li underscore two so we just have to make a slight change here okay so if the output returned by the check function is true then we print identical and if it is not true then we print not identical so let's go ahead and check if this works and there we go so as you can see the first list li underscore one is identical has identical elements whereas the second list li underscore two has elements which are not identical so that brings us to the end of the second method and now let's discuss about another way of solving our problem now the third way is quite similar to the method that we followed just now however in this case we are not going to use a for loop to compare the elements instead we are going to use a built in function which is known as all so let's go ahead and understand what the all function helps us to do so as you can see all is a built in method in python which takes one iterable as an argument now this iterable can be a list tuple or a dictionary it returns true if all iterable elements evaluate to true using implicit boolean conversion otherwise it returns false now you can definitely go ahead and have a look at this tutorial i'll provide the link to this article and the video in the description below but i just wanted you to get an idea about what the all built in method helps us to do so now that you know that it helps us to compare all the elements within an iterable which is a list in this case so let's go ahead and implement the all method and derive the output that we want so let's create a variable by the name pt 
and within it let's store the output that will be returned by our all function and now within this all function we are going to check if element is equal to the first item within the list where element represents each item within the list so to do that we are using a for loop saying for element in li and that's it and now we simply return the output stored by the variable pt and this is going to be a boolean value that is when it is true then we print identical that is all elements within the list are identical and when pt is false then we print not identical that is the elements within the list are not identical now let's go ahead and execute this code and there we go as you can see identical in the first case that is for li underscore one while not identical for the second case which is li underscore two so that's how easy it was with the help of the all method now another approach to check if all elements in the list are identical or not is to utilize a built-in method in python which is set the set method allows us to convert the list into a set and before we proceed further there is a very important property of a set which you must remember which will help us to solve our problem that is there cannot be any duplicate elements in a set therefore if every element in the list is identical that is if every element is same and then we use the set method to convert the list into a set then the length of that set will be 1 because now it contains only a single element because all the elements are identical and a set cannot contain identical elements thus if the length of that set is 1 this means the list had identical elements otherwise if the length of that set is not 1 then that means the elements within the list were not identical so let's go ahead and have a look at the code which is going to help us to do that and as you can see we have our function check and within this function we are going to convert the list which is li underscore 1 in the first case and li underscore 2 in the second case into a set and then we find the length of the set if this length is equal to 1 then our output variable stores all elements in the list are equal otherwise the output stores all elements in the list are not equal so this is exactly the computation that we are performing that i explained you a little while ago that is we are simply converting the list into a set and then we are finding the length of that set and if that is equal to 1 then the list is identical that is the list has identical elements otherwise the list does not have identical elements or rather I should say all the elements in the list are not identical so let's go ahead and execute this code and let's check what's the output and there we go as you can see in the first case when we passed li underscore 1 within the function check we received the output all elements in the list are equal which is indeed true because li underscore 1 has all identical elements while in the second case when we passed li underscore 2 within the function check we received the output all elements in the list are not equal or they are not identical so that's how you can use the set method upon a list and check if all the elements are identical or not okay so by now we have discussed four methods of checking if all the elements in a given list are identical or not now let's use another method that is going to help us to perform the same operation now the fifth approach is a very simple trick that you can use you have to take the first element of the list and then multiply it with the length of the list to help create another list that is we are simply creating another list 
and now this new list will contain same elements as the first element of the given list that is you take the first element that is hello in this case and then multiply it by the length of the list which is 5 in this case that is for li underscore 1 it is 5 and you get another list which has the element hello stored within it 5 times and now what you do is simply go ahead and compare the two lists if both of them are equal then that means li underscore 1 had elements which are identical to each other that is all the elements were identical to each other whereas in the second case you will find that the new list will have the string hello four times within it and that new list wouldn't be equal to li underscore 2 because li underscore 2 has different elements that is hello welcome to Fingster as individual elements within it. So they won't be equal to each other and then we can simply deduce the output that they are not identical that is the elements within li underscore 2 are not identical to each other. So let us quickly go ahead and let's have a look at the code that is going to help us to do so. So there we go. So we have our function check and within it we pass li underscore 1 or in this case lst1 and lst2 and then we simply return the output of the following. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to extract the first element of the list. So how are we going to do that? We are going to do that with the help of its index. So the 0th index in both the cases that is lst1 and lst2 have the element or the string hello and then we are multiplying it with the length of the list that is in this case it is going to be 5 while in this case it is going to be 4. So this part right here is going to create a new list that will contain the string hello five times in the first case when we pass lst1 to the function check and it will create another list which contains the string hello four times since the length of lst2 is four and now we are simply going to check if that newly created list is equal to our given list that is lst1 in first case and lst2 in the second case. So let me use a comment to help you understand things in a better way. So suppose we are passing lst2 within the function check. So what happens in this line is a new list is created which stores the string hello within it four times one, two, three and four. And now we are going to check if this newly created list is equal to our original list which has the following values or the following elements. Now note that we are performing this check for our list lst2. So as you can see that they are not equal to each other this means all the elements within the original list are not identical to each other. So I hope the logic makes sense and now let's go ahead and execute our code to find out if this works. And there we go. As you can see all elements in list 1 are equal. Indeed it is because lst1 has all elements which represent a string hello while the second case all elements in the list 2 are not equal. So with that we come to the end of this tutorial and I have given you 5 methods to check if all elements in a list are identical or not. I have also mentioned another method in the article the link to which I will provide in the description below and in that method you can slice the list and then compare the elements. So that's an exercise for you to perform. If you have any doubts regarding that method please drop a comment and I will definitely help you with your doubts. I hope you found this video to be useful. If so, please give it a like and subscribe our channel. So that's it for today. Goodbye.